Little Town Hero is a little project from the developers behind the main Pokemon RPG series, Game Freak. With this connection, you could assume that a lot might be shared between this game and other Pokemon games from Game Freak, but I came to find that Little Town Hero definitely holds its own identity well. The game has gotten some well-deserved buzz for the composition team that Game Freak makes sure to advertise in each of its trailers. Toby Fox, best known for his amazing music from Undertale, and Hitomi Sato, an incredible composer in her own right with a background starting at the soundtrack for Pokemon Diamond and Pearl and spanning until the modern Pokemon games. With the killer composition team and Game Freak behind it, it's no surprise that I think Little Town Hero holds some big successes, but it also leaves more to be desired in some places. Though Little Town Hero succeeds well in other areas, the story just barely succeeds in doing the minimum. Like most other Game Freak stories, the game's story begins by naming your character, but that doesn't mean your character is a blank slate. The hero of this story is as hot-headed as his hair would make him seem. His character traits don't span too far from this defining point, though. He has a few friends around this little town too, like Matok. This green-haired rival challenges the hero at a few points in the story, and he's always trying to get a leg up on the hero despite his quick battle prowess. There's also the more meek Nels, a friend of the hero and Matok who supports them from the side with his inventive ideas, helping at various points in the story and in battles this way. Training the hero and Matok in battle is Angard, a soldier that used to work for the castle. And supporting the hero and Matok respectively on your journeys to get stronger are the hero's mom, Ember, and Matok's sister, Pasmina. The general gist of the story is that the hero wants to explore what lies outside of his town, so he trains with his rival to become a soldier for the town's king. After doing his usual work in the mines, the hero finds a strange red stone. Afterwards, a monster invades town, despite the outside world being closed off from it, and the hero stops the monster. From there, the hero has to do other tasks around town, whether it's part of the main quest or a side quest, and he has to defeat other monsters he encounters on the way. The game definitely doesn't excel when it comes to its story and characters. They're simple and predictable, and though many interactions are mildly cute in the moment, they don't end up adding very much to the game overall. The story in this game does what it needs to, but doesn't really exceed in engaging the player past the bare minimum. So for that, I'll rate the story a C. The story and the characters are okay. I've always believed Game Freak has excelled in their game's presentations, and this one is no exception. The art style immediately lends itself well to the whimsical and sometimes silly world with its cell-shaded designs. The design of the town itself, like the story, is not very complex, but I believe its design's strengths lie in its characters. Each one is distinct with different brightly colored designs. The UI uses color in practical ways to indicate battle actions, too, which I'll talk more about later. The monster designs fit well with the art style, but seem generic and a bit uninspired to me. Of course, the music is as great as expected. It's not quite at the level of the composition team's other works, but it's still wonderful. The town's main theme, which you'll be hearing very often throughout the game, definitely seems designed to be catchy enough to listen to a lot. I'm happy to say I never got tired of it. It's easily my favorite song in the game. Its changes in instruments depending on which area you travel to was a simple touch that gave even more depth to the song. And hearing the rival simpler sounding overworld theme used as a motif in his battle theme reminded me quickly of Papyrus' catchy overworld and battle themes in Undertale. As for how the game runs and its load times, they have some small problems. The load times can be lengthy when starting the game up and when the game transitions between the overworld and a battle. Sometimes the music might stutter a bit because of other loading times for smaller events, which was a minor inconvenience, but it didn't happen often. The frame rate isn't very important for a turn-based game like this, but the frame rate in this game does have problems when too many objects are on screen. For example, when the camera is pointed towards the town from the mine area, the game is considerably slowed down because it seems like it can't handle loading a view of the entire town at once. It slows the experience down occasionally, but it wasn't really a problem for me. The game's presentation has some issues in its loading times and frame rate, but these are not big problems when more important aspects like the art style and music are so successful in creating such a fun and cute atmosphere. For its presentation, I'll give it an A. Its art style and music are well done. 
The game really shines with its battle system. Although it seemed complex at first, after I understood how it worked, I had fun using it. A turn begins with a series of thoughts, called isits, that can be converted into actions, dazits. Each isit has a power cost to become a dazit, beginning each battle with three power points you can use, then gaining more power as the battle continues. This system allows you to use more dazits as a battle goes on. Each Dazit has an offense and a defense. Then these clash against the stats of an opponent's Dazit, and the weaker one breaks. The Dazit still standing is damaged and has a lower defense score during following turns, which means it can break easier. Each Izzet and Dazit comes in three types, Attack, Defense, and Special, which are red, yellow, and blue respectively. Attacks can be used once in a turn, defense can be used many times, and special can be used once for a special effect before clashing your Dazit with an opponent's. Your Izzet choices are randomly selected from your pool of thoughts at the beginning of each turn, which limits your options to managing what Dazits are available and what Izzets may be useful Dazits for that turn or later in the battle. By breaking all of an enemy's Dazits, you can either do direct damage to an enemy, if you have an attack Dazit available, or, if not, get a break point. These break points can be used to switch out an Izzet on a turn you're looking for one in particular, or you can use the points to revive Izzets that have already been broken as Dazits. Other aspects of the system include the support that townspeople or other things sitting around your current area can do to help defeat a monster. You're able to move around a map after each turn by stopping a spinner and moving to other locations in the town, which can give you new support opportunities as you do. Using support is key to later bosses in the game, since bosses begin to have much larger health that makes it harder to defeat them even after breaking their Dazits. You can also improve your Izzets with a skill tree that can be progressed through using your Eka points, earned after each battle, allowing for more diverse progression outside of many turn-based games' usual level-up system. While all this seems like a lot to take in, it flows much more naturally over the pace of the game, and the system gives you opportunities to make mistakes before continuing. With the color-coded Izzets and Dazits, it was easy to learn each type and their uses. Then, naturally, start experimenting with the other battle strategies after learning the other mechanics in their simplest forms. For gameplay, I give this game a B+. Great gameplay because of its innovative battle system. Little Town Hero may not be for everyone, with its straightforward story, simple character interactions, and minor but present loading issues. However, the game's art style and music certainly give it a cute and pleasant identity, and its gameplay gives its battles more strategy than may be understood after short play sessions. I would suggest Little Town Hero to anyone interested in turn-based RPGs or other strategy games because of its battle system. This system, and the game's great presentation, succeed in giving it more depth, and for $25, it is totally worth the price of admission just to try them out, even if you don't think the story or characters will do it for you. Overall, I liked Little Town Hero, so I'd give it a B. Thanks again to Game Freak for the review copy of Little Town Hero. If you enjoyed this review, leave a like and subscribe for more. You can support us on Patreon through the link in the description too. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support. Let me know what you thought of this review in the comments below. This is my first one, so I'm happy to take any constructive criticism. This has been Cody Nokolo signing off, and with that, always remember to return to the source.